how to break into the fashion industry on today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by Digit. Save money without thinking about it. Get paid $5 just for signing up at servenomaster.com backslash digit today. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now. Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Serve No Master Podcast, where you'll learn how to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author, Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host. I've been interested in fashion for a long time, and I've been working on something kind of in the background that I haven't shared yet because uh, kind of a couple of different things happened. But my background in fashion comes from my family. Actually, my grandfather was in women's fashion. He was in uh, coats and was very, 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 very successful. That's why my grandmother was a model. So he married one of his models and made my father. Now, my father went in a different direction and went into the entertainment field. And I've dealt with a lot of musicians for a long time. He was in kind of the back office part of, now he wasn't a musician, but he worked with a lot of musicians in the back office. And so I skipped a generation, but then my oldest sister was a designer for a long time. She was a designer at a large company that if I said the name, you would definitely know. She worked there for uh, five, seven, something like that, like a long time before moving into another artistic direction. And then another one of my sisters is uh, in fashion now. She managed a fashion house for a long time. And then now she's partners in a new fashion venture in the wedding space, something a little bit outside my expertise. I'm not an expert at wedding fashion, but so there's a lot of fashion in my blood. Now, if you know me, you know, there's one thing I hate and it's stuff. For a long time, the fashion process has been, you think of something, you think of a design, you draw it, you cut it, you make it, then you get a thousand of them made and you ship them to a bunch of shops over all over America and you hope people buy them. And there are huge elements of risk in that business that require a great deal of math. Fashion designers have to really have their math down. You have to figure out how many smalls, mediums, larges, and extra larges of everything to order. And for latest fashions, of course, it's zeros up to 18 or size 22, whatever. And one of the reasons my grandfather was so successful is he was quite good at playing that game. And in the 50s and 60s, a lot of fashion designers in his industry were notorious for when they had too many smalls no one was buying the smalls, everyone was buying the mediums. They would just put medium tags on them and sell them to stores. He was famous for not doing that. So in a business where the level of integrity is so low, all you have to do is not steal from people or not cheat people and you kind of become well known for it. So that was my grandfather's reputation. He didn't change the tags. <laughs> and it, at that time, and maybe even now it's the same, that's enough to be known for something. That's enough to be known as, wow, that's the, most, that's the guy with the most integrity. He doesn't change the tags and trick people into different sizes. And when you think about sizes, I was looking at a report recently, a study, you know, Americans are getting fatter and fatter. We all know that it's not a secret. Sizes change. So the definition of a medium, the definition of a small has changed in the last 20 and 30 years for men and for women. All the numbers are totally different. <laughs> in Japan, I'm somewhere between a four and a five XL. In America, I'm a medium to a large. I'm not even an extra large in America. It's such a difference depending on where you go. If you go to a country where people take care of themselves and everyone's skinny, then I'm considered horribly overweight. And in fact, I kind of have been letting my exercise slack for the last month. I let it slip. We did a weigh-in two days ago, and I realized I got to do, I got to get really focused again. So I'm working on pushing my size down again. I want to hit that perfect number. And so I've started a new regime with my wife, and so far it's been really good. I'm excited about that. But along the way... I've been looking at sizes and looking at the definition of skinny and fat and how those things have changed over the last 50 years. The average size now used for the average middle of the road person used to be considered fat. So all the numbers have changed, what would we have changed? So when you're buying and getting a fashion industry, you have to guess at what sizes people buy and what sizes people will be in six months or a year when the clothes come out. And those are the parts of the fashion industry that are simply baffling. You have these fashion shows where people wear clothes that no one would ever wear in real life. They never have fashion shows where people are wearing the clothes that people can buy. So I've never really understood that part of the industry, even though I've been within one degree of separation. I've worked with some fashion designers. I've worked in the past with three or four. I've worked with a well-known fashion photographer who shot for Italian Vogue, and I still don't get it. I don't understand the difference between the two things. Why have a fashion show? 
if it's not the clothes people to actually wear, but I'm sure I'm missing something because all the big companies do it. And when they do it, it leads to great success. So there's obviously a piece I'm missing in that process where I guess you have to demonstrate that you could design really amazing, crazy clothes that no one would wear in order to be allowed to sell your regular clothes in Target. Maybe that's a rule. I don't know. I also don't understand why so many celebrities become fashion designers. Very confusing. However, I am moving into that area. I've been dabbling around fashion for about six months on the side, working with some stuff. And my approach to fashion, it starts with a different business structure. The reason I've started dabbling in fashion is because print on demand right now is amazing. You can print on demand just about anything you can think of. We've talked about 3D printing in the past. You know that I like printing my books on demand. And now they have clothing on demand. And it's not just t-shirts. I've begun to dabble. And in fact, if you go to servedomaster.com backslash gear, G-A-R, I haven't shown anyone the page yet. I decided, you know what? I'm going to share with it. The reason I haven't shown it to you is because I haven't been able to do a test order of clothes, but I'm going to do one today. And when I go to America next week, I'm going to check out my order and see what my clothes actually look like in person. That's the next step in my process so that I can really see it in person. And What's cool is you can do a whole range of things from print on demand. You can do silk screening, heat transfer, direct to garment printing. I don't fully understand each of these different processes, but I read what the differences are. You can do dresses, you can do tights, you can do underwear, anything you want to do. And it all kind of goes through uh, Shopify, which is a cool platform I've been dabbling with. And I've been dabbling with clothing and some of the other niches I operate in. That's why I haven't done a lot with the Serve No Master stuff. I've been dabbling in the parenting space with some designs with someone I've been working with and really trying to get there. Now, what I love about this business model, there's a couple of things I like about it. The first of all is my clothes are the one place you can pay with Bitcoin. I have it set up. Shopify is way more advanced platform than pay Kickstarter. You know, I use pay Kickstarter, my regular shopping cart, and it's wonderful, but it's only been in development for about six months and they're constantly building new things. And in fact, I was speaking with a developer yesterday. They added one new feature for me and they're going to add another integration I asked in about two months. They added it to the cycle. So I love working with someone I know. But the great thing about Shopify, it's been around. They have so many integrations. They can do amazing things. So if you only want to spend Bitcoin with me, it's the only way you can spend money online. I finally have a way to take it for clothing. Now, I do want to give you a caveat that I have designed these clothes. And of course, they've passed all the testing, but I haven't seen one in my hands in person yet. If you want to be the first person to order something and give it a test drive, that would be amazing. And I'd say right now, anyone who buys <laughs> any piece of clothing from me and takes a picture wearing it, you're going to end up on the website. I'll put you up for sure. Hopefully, I'll have a chance to check it out and try it out in person. But I've kind of been waiting to my trip back to America so I can order some stuff for myself. The thing I really want to design was some hats and I've run into some trouble there. It's really hard with all these different places. And there's tons of places that will do the printing for you to design the perfect hat. I just want a hat with my logo on it, but they make it hard. I don't wear clothing with a lot of writing on it. So I wanted to do uh, like polos with just my logo in the corner. So there's a couple of things I've been dabbling with and I have to see how they look in person. They look great in the drawings and you can see them on the gear page, but this is me starting to move into a new area. And the reason this business model is great and the reason it can be a really interesting direction for you to go in if you have an artistic side is the business model is quite simple. You don't have to invest any money up front. You make the drawings yourself or you pay someone to do the designs anywhere from, it's anywhere from 15, from five to $50 a design. If you order a whole batch, sometimes you can get someone to do like a thousand designs for $2 a design. If you're really exploding into the space, but you can start with just five or 10 designs. And there are two ways to sell shirts online for print on demand. One way is a time band. You run a promotion for a week and say, Hey, if we get enough shirts ordered, We'll print them all out. And this is the Teespring model. You've probably seen it. So they say, uh, if we order, if at least we sell at least 25 t-shirts, then we'll actually print them. Anything less, we'll just return your money. This model has been around for a few years. A lot of people made a lot of money doing it over the last few years, and it's still pretty good. The other way to do it, which is what I do, I'm not into uh, doing hard campaigns and hard promotions. I don't have the time to do that level of push, is to simply have print-on-demand stuff available in a catalog style or e-commerce website. And in my case, I run it through Shopify, which I mentioned before. And it's a pretty good platform because I was able to figure out that means it's simple enough. So you can set up a store. We have tons of stuff for sale that has different designs and logos and funny t-shirts or amazing dresses, all these different things. With the platform I use, with the printer that I use in my backend, for t-shirts, I have hundreds of designs before I even put the print on it. You can get American Apparel, you can get Hanes, all these different shirt designs, whether you want like a high polyester content or you want 100% cotton, all these different things. So even just the basic t-shirt is a really complex order. It's not easy. 
and there's hundreds of colors to choose from and all these different things. So there's a lot you can do with, with your creativity and it doesn't cost you anything. It's kind of fun. My daughter loves playing with Play-Doh and it kind of feels the same way where you're mixing and matching colors and just designing stuff and playing around. So you have a very simple business model. Create some designs you think people will like, and then you find ways to people sell them. So how do you bring in the traffic to sell them? How do you get people to buy your shirts? And this is uh, the step that some people find a little daunting. The best place to do this is to run ad campaigns on Facebook. A lot of people do this very successfully. And the key with Facebook ads and the key with shirt design is targeting. I would never try and sell shirts that say like my, have my logo or say Servo Master on them or have some of my catchphrases on them just on Facebook to anyone. I wouldn't target that. It's too wide. Only people who visit my website or heard of me would be interested in that. So the only people I can mention it to are people who listen to the podcast, people who read the blog, who read the book. So it's a small niche and people are interested or not. In fact, I don't know yet. I haven't told anyone yet. I'm just recording this now because probably by the time I release this, I'll, have, I'll be in America and have a chance to check my person. But I just want to share this with you. So you get a feel for what I'm working on. Hopefully the timing will be perfect. With these types of designs, with this very simple business model, you match your targeting to your design. So you find people who are in an area where they're very passionate. And in the past, a lot of my friends, they have big campaigns for dogs. So let's say your campaign is all about people who love poodles. You can dig a little deeper, okay? And say nurses who love poodles. Nurses love to buy t-shirts. They are a great market for shirts. Everyone knows that who's in the shirt game. So you make a t-shirt that's for nurses who love poodles. And you could say like, Poodles have great bedside manner. And it's got a picture of a poodle being funny, by, like dressed up like a nurse or something. It's kind of funny. And then you run a Facebook ad campaign to nurses who also have poodles. So it allows you to have a very targeted campaign. Super, super, super targeted to an audience that wears a lot of t-shirts. And the reason nurses wear a lot of t-shirts has to do with wearing them uh, under their scrubs. And that's why it's a good market for it. Or they wear them when they take off their scrubs and they're on the way home. So nurses are a great t-shirt market. It's kind of like everyone you know probably has a t-shirt from a medical company's exercise day. It's always got, everyone has one from like the osteo clinic where I come from, or they have like from a fun run from the physical therapy center. They're very common where I come from. Everyone has these shirts. And this is the same type of thing. In the medical field, people love t-shirts. Simple as that. So you design a very simple campaign and you can be very successful. And the key is matching ideas to niches, at matching people where they are. When you're targeting on, Facebook is very specific. The pricing is much, 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 much lower. If you're just trying to target all women in America, very expensive. If you target all nurses, still pretty expensive. Nurses who like poodles, now you're starting to get somewhere affordable. And they're far more likely to buy because you've met them at two places. If you've seen some of the videos that one of my mentors has posted on Facebook called The One, he talks about copywriting, and you want to find the one customer, the one pain point, the one thing that defines them. And he talks about when you're trying to connect with someone, you want to be more than a demographic. And if you connect with them on more levels, then one, you start to have success. Once you connect with someone on two levels, so gender and age gets you there. Profession and hobby. In this case, it's profession and pet. And if you also add in gender and you say, oh, I'm gonna, this is a shirt for women who are nurses or poodles, you've now hit them and three bands. And you're very likely to hit that success. And you can then do a separate shirt for male nurses if you want to run that targeting. I don't know how large the male nursing population is. You might actually be able to get cheaper advertising. I haven't tested it, so I don't have the answer to that particular idea. When you're trying to come up with markets and ideas to design, there's tons of data out there. There are several pieces of software that will track and show you what's very successful. They'll show you all the biggest campaigns in the last month, six months, a year on Teespring and other t-shirt platforms. So you can see what other people are buying. It doesn't have to be a secret. You can see exactly what people like and exactly what they like about it. And that's really cool. So if you look, you'll often find certain things are very hot. And there's certain things that are just consistent sellers on shirts. There's this nurse's t-shirt that says like, sexy enough to stop your heart, but smart enough to restart it. I can't remember the exact wording, but it's one of those. And it says like nurses, like nurses are so hot. We know how to stop your heart and bring you back to life with a defibrillator but it's written way wittier than that. I can't remember the exact phrasing. There's variations of that shirt that are always killing it. And so you can come out with your own similar ideas and you go, okay, what I like to look at are the fonts that are working, the structure t-shirt design that's very strong. And that gives you a place to work from. And of course, as you grow your brand, and as you move into this market, you can do more and more things. 
you can start to do t-shirts that are full design. So you can actually do a full color shirt where the whole shirt is covered in your design rather than just having something still screened in the middle of the front. You can do cooler and cooler and cooler things as you really play around with the stuff and it's wonderful. I really like this market. I haven't dedicated as much time as I wanted to with this field. I want to do more designs and work in more things. And I want to do a lot more, especially my other niche, especially in my, my mom audience for my mom stuff and my personal development audience for some of my other side stuff. But as you know, I've been focusing more and more and more on Serve No Master lately. So I got some designs done that I actually like. I think they're pretty cool. And now that I think about it, I'm probably going to get another batch of designs done this week. So I have some different ideas to work with that are pretty cool. And I think that will be very exciting. I think that'll be something fun for people to check out. I definitely, the reason I started designing stuff for me, I specifically ran into this strange hurdle where I live. It's very, very, very hard to acquire baseball hats. Now I live on the beach where it's crazy hot and I always need a hat. Oftentimes when I'm out paddling or surfing, I want to have a baseball hat on because the sun is just blazing. And unfortunately, it's so hard to find one. I had a cool Ford one for a few months, but obviously when you have kids and it disappeared. No one admits what happened to it, but it disappeared. Then the hat after that I lost in the ocean. And now I've got a, like a tan hat. I don't even remember what it says. I can't remember what the hat I wear says, but my wife was able to find one hat on the island. It's not great. So I'd love to have like 10 hats with my logo on it. Just to make me feel cool. There's not even anyone here that I want to see my hat in and buy products for me, but it would just be cool for me. I want to do something that's just for me. Have a little of my own uh, stuff, if you will. It's kind of cool to have your name or your logo on some clothing. Why not? So you don't even have to do it to sell to other people. You can just make a small batches of t-shirts. Or if you're doing live speaking events or other things like that, you can also enter this market, which is really interesting. I know that a lot of people who follow this podcast, a lot of people listen to the podcast or read the blog are in the space where you speak at events. And we all think about selling books at the back of the room and that's cool. But what if you had like five or 10 motivational designs and you can take orders in person, you can even do it directly with Shopify and you can say, here's my different designs, what size are you? It'll be there this week. And it will, it's pretty quick. So instead of, you don't even have to do the thing where you print a bunch of shirts and sell them from the back room because then you're playing that size game. I hate that game. But you can have shirts available, designs available that people can order and buy right out the gate. That's really cool. I like that a lot. So this isn't just about one direction. What I'm trying to do is plant seeds and show you there are different ways you can get into fashion, different ways you can play with ideas and monetize what you're doing. I see sometimes there were a while where a bunch of t-shirts were going on television and saying, hey, we're a really big t-shirt brand. You should invest a bunch of money. We have huge value. And oftentimes they have one design, which has no copyright. It's a commodity. And that's the problem with most t-shirt designs. It's very hard to have something that you own the copyright to. The only way to do that is if you write some text that's totally original, then you can own that and say, oh, that's my sentence. No one else can use it. But if it's just a picture of a state or if it's just one word, you don't own that. Other people can make similar stuff. And the other area where it's tough is with licensing. I've tried to look into that. One of my friends was trying to do it where you license from television shows and stuff. And it is possible, but the process is a little bit beyond me. Even after I spoke to some of my attorneys in that space, and maybe I'll know more after I'm in California, I'll try and find some people that know a little bit more specific about that. But you can also then start to tell t-shirts where you have the rights to different t-shirts or different designs or different TV shows. And that is independent designers can't do that. They're independent sellers. I have a friend who's in that market. He buys from someone with a license and resells because he hasn't even been able to get the license himself yet. And that's totally fine too, because the license... The licensee or the person who owns the copyright, the person who owns that TV show design rights gets paid when he buys from his vendor. So there is another way to enter this market where you don't even have to make your own designs. That's a little bit more complicated because you have to either guarantee a certain amount of money or a certain number of sales, all these other things. That's not quite the direction I want to move into, but I do want to plant seeds in your head. I always want to get you with ideas swirling and thinking. Wherever you are, there are ways make money quickly. There are ways to be creative. If you're in college or if you're younger in your high school, oh, I'd like to make a few bucks. Well, let's think about it. Design a really cool t-shirt that's just for people to go to your high school. At my high school, they, when I went to high school there, they probably put out 30 or 40 t-shirt designs. Every time there was an event, whether it was homecoming or a big game or a big contest, they used to put out a different shirt every couple of months. T-shirt they wanted everyone to buy it. I don't have any anymore. Now that I think about it, I think I ended up losing... I mean, it's been 20 years, right? <laughs> I eventually got rid of them because they were all white t-shirts and I don't 
I look terrible in white. I'm so pale that if I wear a white t-shirt, it looks like I'm topless. My skin is so pale. Even though I live on the beach, you wouldn't know it. So I prefer to wear dark colors. And you'll notice if you see any pictures of me, you never see me in a white t-shirt anymore. That's why I stopped wearing those shirts from high school. But if you're in high school, you can do your own design. Do a design for a game or a party or something people like or an event that's coming up or something cool. And same thing, college sororities and fraternities do it like crazy too. Just do a design, sell 25 shirts, 25 bucks a pop. That's a pretty good payday. It's quite a bit of money and it gives you a place to start. Your profit per shirt will be five to $10. So let's say you sell uh, 25 shirts, $25, your profit's $10, you made $250. Well, what happens if a bunch of people like your shirt? The magic is when something tips. So you're at college, you put your design up on the board. You say, hey, I've got this shirt. I'm going to get a bunch printed. If you want one, just let me know. And you just post a link to your website or whatever. You put a link on your Facebook page and you start taking orders. And suddenly people go, man, that shirt is awesome. And they start telling each other about it. And you instead of selling 10 or 25, you end up selling 100. <laughs> you just made two and a half grand from a drawing and sticking it up on the wall in your college. I wish this option had been available when I was younger because I would have killed at doing this. It's such an easy, simple business model. The key is speed to action. When I was in high school, there was a guy named Bob. I don't want to say his last name, but it was just as boring. And his name was so boring that everyone thought it was fake. And for a while, every bathroom, <laughs> someone would write Bob was here. They used, half the time they'd include his last name. And it would be written in every bathroom and written on the walls everywhere. Bob was here. Bob was here. It became very trendy for about three to six months. It really peaked after the first couple of months and then slowly went down. The best part of it was that anytime someone did it, he had to go clean it. The school would make him clean it, even though he wasn't the one writing it. They're like, well, it says your name, dude. It's got probably you. So it was hilarious. He was always cleaning and I'm sure he hated that this was happening. But what can you do when something starts trending? That would have been the perfect moment for me to put out some Bob was here t-shirts as a way to commemorate this hilarious moment. So there are, when you're in a community of any kind, you have things that happen that are memorable and cool. And you create a design and you say, hey, I'm gonna get some t-shirts printed up. If anyone wants some, just let me know. And you just post your link. You don't even have to do face-to-face -face anything. They can buy it directly through a little button on Facebook. They don't have to leave the website now. Shopify is very cool, big company. It runs a lot of websites. So you can get creative that way. You know, If you work at a company, and something becomes trendy. Sometimes you'll be working on a project and everyone's talking about, oh, the Thompson Project. Put some Thompson Project t-shirts, why not? Look, either it works or it doesn't. To get a design done, you go to five, you pay someone five or 10 bucks, depending upon if you want text or you also want a little icon on it, 10 bucks. If it works, you make a couple thousand bucks. If it doesn't, these things happen. So there are many different ways you can get creative. Anytime you're within a group, you can, find something that's trending within the group and take swift action. And the same thing for television and media. Sometimes things hit the news. Right now, there are tons of t-shirts and hats that are variations of the MAGA hat, the Make America Great hat. I've seen make coders great again, make other stuff great again. So people put make a different word than great again. And how simple is that? You see those hats on TV all the time where someone's got a variation of a political hat and guess what? Someone designed and sold that. All they did was copy the text and change one word and start selling those hats. Someone's making money off the simplest thing right now. There's no creativity there. There's no drawing. You take someone else's design, you change one word and start cranking out red hats. So simple, but massively, massively effective. They're working because I've seen a few on the news lately, I've seen people on television wearing these hats. And it's a bit ironic. I saw hat make, make Bitcoin great again is another hat that I saw in the news recently. So there are interesting things you can do if you pay attention to the news or media or something, you can jump out and crank out hats. Another example would be, you don't like politics and you know that I never talk about politics. This just happens to be a print on demand thing that's happening is entertainment. Let's talk about entertainment. Right now, I don't know why, all the entertainment award shows have gotten really political. Everyone wants to talk about their politics because if there's one thing I want to get my political advice from, it's someone who lucked out in that industry. Having been around the entertainment industry a lot of my life, I definitely know the last person I would ever take business advice from or political advice from is an actor. But for some reason, they think everyone wants to know their political opinion, whether on the left or the right, whatever. 
if you could come up with a cool idea, you could do really well. You could do a pro or a con for any actor who's up there talking about their politics. You can make a shirt that says they're the greatest thing ever, that you totally agree with them, right? For people that want to do solidarity. Then you make a shirt that's against them. And then you run ads on Facebook targeting people from both sides of the political spectrum. And they're both buying shirts from you that say the opposite thing. Who cares? You're making money. Another way to go, let's move even further away from politics, is creativity. One of the first things I did, the first time I made $10,000 in a month, I created a website. God, long time ago, five years ago. News came out that two celebrities who had been married for about five years at the time, three to five years, were on the rocks. There was a hint that he had been with another woman in a hotel. He's more famous than her. So I bought his name, divorce.com. My website trended. It was number one for that term. It was a huge search term for about six weeks. And of course, eventually he did get divorced. And now he's married to another woman or about to marry another woman. I don't, <laughs> I'm not as in touch with celebrity stuff as I want to be. Now you can't use, you don't want to do too much where you use someone's name too much, but if they start using a phrase all the time, you know, people say, don't make a YOLO shirt, but people say YOLO, like you only live once all the time. So some, you can use catchphrases and stuff that aren't really owned or little things like that. There's just being creative, paying attention to what's going on around you. You could make a killing doing global warming shirts. I believe in global warming or I don't believe in global warming. People will buy those shirts all day long. Again, why take a side in a controversy when you can sell to both sides? Now, I do know that morally you might be against it. Here's why. It's the same argument most arms dealers make. They sell guns to both sides of a war. So selling t-shirts to both sides of a war might be the same thing, but you can't kill it with a t-shirt probably. It's just something to think about. When people think about getting into t-shirts, they often think, oh, I, I can only do a sports team or this and that. I can only do something licensed. You don't have to. Just use catchphrases or say witty things. Just pay attention to what's going on, whether it's within your small group, or within your community, or within your city, and you can start building on stuff. This is how you can get into the fashion industry without spending a bunch of money, without doing a huge amount of risk, and kind of go after something. And there's one last thing I want to talk about because I do have some high fashion people who follow me. And this is for you guys. High fashion is not what we're talking about here. I'm not able to design really great cuts of a t-shirt. I can choose from, they have like 50 designs, but I'm limited in, to those designs. I don't actually get to design the t-shirt. I only get to design what's on it. So this is one tier below fashion designer, or maybe it's a bunch of tiers, but it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing as designing the shape of the shirt or the, or the cut at all. You can't affect that. It's designing what's on it. So whatever level that is, whether it's like shirt artist or even lower, fine. 10% of people in the world have really great fashion sense. The other 90% of the world are the people I'd rather sell to. That's my market. Now, I right now am wearing, oh gosh, oh, I'm actually wearing my store-bought shorts. If you've read Serve No Master, you know that I, I bought one pair of shorts and then I had a lady on my island, so a bunch of replicants. I'm actually wearing the originals right now. I didn't even realize my wife had put them out yesterday. I'm wearing a pair of shorts that cost $20 and I'm wearing a shirt that cost $2 or $3. I can't remember if it was on sale the day I bought it. Sometimes there's three, sometimes there's two. So I'm in total right now recording this podcast wearing like $25 or $30 worth of clothing at most. I don't do high fashion. But now I went through a phase for a long time where I had a personal shopper at Saks and I was all about dressing really fancy. I used to have like a really expensive laptop bag with no room in it. I've just moved into a different phase. I did the high fashion thing for a while. So I don't do high fashion anymore myself and I'm my own customer. So when you're thinking about who to sell stuff to, approach the bigger market. Not everyone is always trying to look awesome. Now, the good thing is you can do some cool high fashion stuff if you want to. If you want to do a dress where the whole dress is covered in a really cool printed on design, print direct to garment, you now can. So you can do stuff that's getting closer and closer. And eventually you will be able to do the cut. I believe we're within five years of that. So you can eventually get to a point, I think we will as a culture where all clothing is print on demand. I believe that within probably 20 years, we'll have uh, clothing printers, just like we have 3D printers now. The technology will move to the point where you can do fabric. I don't think we're that far away from it because it's not that complicated. I think it's more pricing, it's the cost of like having a tiny sewing machine or a tiny thresher or a tiny, I forget the thing, it slides back and forth with a shuttle that you use to make carpets, but that's what I was thinking of. A weaving machine, maybe it's a weaver. I'm sure I said the name wrong, but Try to put all those machines and microtize them right now. Is it possible? But I think as we move into print on demand more and more, we'll move into other and other materials. We've already moved from plastics into metals with print on demand. I think clothing is coming. So eventually you will be able to do everything from home. That's why it's a great idea to start dabbling now and you can reach more and more of the masses. 
And this is how you can jump into the fashion industry and make a killing right now. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Serve No Master. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back tomorrow with more tips and tactics on how to escape that rat race. Head over to servenomaster.com forward slash podcasts now for your chance to win a free copy of Jonathan's bestseller, Serve No Master. All you have to do is leave a five-star review of this podcast. See you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Serve No Master podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode.